Alright, what's poppin' people? We're back, and there's another Create a Pokemon Team Tour going on. The Cap Premier League, and you know what? I'm playing again. Now, little backstory. Last couple tournaments, I've done pretty poorly. <laughs> I have had some really bad performances lately. I think through last year's Team Tours, I went a combined, what, 1-4 or something? It wasn't too good. It wasn't too good, especially last tour where I played, I like actively tried to lose, it felt like. So this time around, we're gonna try to win games. I think that's a lot more fun to do. And I got this team right here. Um, there's no Stealth Rock Setter. That's something I kind of noticed once I loaded the team and played a few turns out into this battle. But I liked the idea of CBT Tar plus SD Saharaja. For the people that don't know what the Fakemon do in this, Saharaja is a pure ground type with Water Absorb and Deancey's signature move Diamond Storm. It also has moves like Sword Stance and Rapid Spin, so you kind of see where we could go with that. Jumbao, a Grass Fairy type, really just good all around stats, and usually is going to run a Choice Scarf set with Healing Wish as its last move. And Venomicon is a Poison Flying type with Nasty Plot and the ability Stamina, so it's a really good bulky setup sweeper. And of course, look at my opponent's team, I recognize immediately this is going to be like CBT Tar. At least that was my thought. And I'm like, wow, I don't like this match at all, so... <laughs> knew that was going to be a problem. Anyhow, as per usual, I'm going to remind y'all to please subscribe. Because I need more subscribers. I think that's pretty reasonable reason to ask you to sub. And let's get into it. So, I'm gonna lead my T-Tar, because I like the matchup that has against his team. It's not a great one, but if I predict turns properly, then it's pretty alright. And of course, Lamicky being the nickname. Good old little choke next, the Mel Metal. Because I know this club's gonna T-Wave, and something this man does for the first, like, few turns. D2 does not want to switch this clef out. He says, nah. I like letting it stand. I could have double iron bashed, sent this thing to the Shadow Realm. Nope, he just stays in. So I go Zapdos anyway, because I feel like it's a pretty safe play. I predicted Lita, you know, like Pharaoh to come out there. That would have been fine. <laughs> and then he goes for another knock on the bro. So it pops by Colber, which kind of sucks because I'm Colber body press. Ideally for Revile, but I guess it also works for the T Tar. Um, he's going to T wave me here. And it was around this time that I noticed, hey, I don't have Stealth Rock, and I've also not gotten any damage off. So when my Zot, not my Zot, too, my Zapdos here, I actually ended up just heat waving, because I'm like, I need to just start at least doing something. <laughs> and the T-Tar on his team is obviously a big issue. You look at my team. Saharaj is not super bulky on the physical side. If I'm remembering correctly, the stats are like 70 HP, 100 defense. And that's not bad, but it gets a CB Tyranitar. Pain. Truly painful. So I bring in my own T-Tar here, knowing that I think a Crunch is coming out. So it's my best pivot. I go for Stone Edge, predicting the Clef, and I miss, which really sucks. <laughs> and I go for another, because I'm like, okay. I ran a Calc, it does like 70 minimum. And it's fully paralyzed. There's a chance that I get a full para. I could even just get the damage off on it, and that would also be good. But I miss again, which kind of sucks. Doesn't end up hurting me too much this game, fortunately. I'm gonna go into my bow on the Ferrothorn there. Mostly just because I wanted to try pivoting around the Pharaoh. I was thinking either a Leech Seed comes out there, maybe a Hazard. I felt okay about going bow there. In hindsight, not the best play. Though I will say I definitely predicted Leech Seed as I went Zapdos. So that would have been the pivot. And I'm actually going to catch him staying in there with his Tyranitar. Which was an interesting... Um... <laughs> interesting turn to stay in for sure. I think having both of these Pokemon... You're always pretty good to switch out. Looking at T-Tar versus my team, it's just really good. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> what I remember is he predicted... Well, yeah. So, I predicted Zapdos in... He, it's pretty fair to do that, given both the mons, he would switch into Jumbao. Zapdos can double on really easily. However, I'm never messing around with this T-Tar, so I'm always moonblasted. Anyhow, 
the Ferrothorn comes in now, and I go Zapdos, and I'm gonna Hurricane here, because I'm pretty sure that the Landorus is gonna come out, and I get a huge chunk of damage off on that. And I'm gonna Hurricane again too, because I don't really fear anything this Lando can do. It could have toxic me, but having the Healing Wish jump out in the back, I felt alright about playing Zapdos a little bit aggressively like that. And I'm also gonna get the Static on the Landorus. That's pretty nice just to make sure that my Tyranitar can outspeed it if necessary. And I'm gonna pivot into my Assault Vested Melt Metal on the Pulp Shadow Ball. And I'm gonna Ice Punch here because I didn't wanna go for a superpower predicting like Pharaoh. And I didn't wanna double on like predicting one of these two to come out just in case he went Lando and got lefties. Now I think in hindsight, a Zapdos double there is always pretty good because with Titar down, Zapdos is a huge problem. Hurricane does like 45 to the clef, and with a para on it, Damon doesn't really want to have to try pivoting into Zapdos too many times. Dr I almost call it Dragology. Dragapult takes like 80 something from Hurricane, and then of course these three just can't beat Zapdos down. So I think that probably would have been the better play, but Ice Punch still worked fine. The Venomicon's gonna come out. I'm gonna go Zapdos and Discharge here. And I'm going to get a nice dodge there. Now, if you want to be, <laughs> if you want to be a little rude, you could say, doesn't matter. I lived. And technically, I do tank the hurricane, but it would have done like 45 to 54, which is still a lot of damage. It forces Zapdos to like try to find a roost. Potentially forces my Jumbao to Healing Wish earlier, and with the Dragapult on the other side, I still wanted to keep Bow around, even though it really is never going to be cleaning late game. Anyhow, we go my Muddle in versus the Clef, just because I want to try to get this Clef out. So we're going to double into Zap again. It makes another really good play, staying with the Clef. This time he doesn't get to throw off a Moonblast, unfortunately. It is kind of what it is. As we can see, yeah, Zapdos has an insane matchup. He is going to get his pult back in, knowing I need to roost, because keeping Zapdos healthy, super necessary for me to have a single, like, any chance of winning this game. And I don't want to keep going Melmetal. I kind of still felt like I wanted Melmetal around just to um, potentially beat down Clef in one turn. So I'm going to sack the Slowbro because it does actively nothing. And I'm going to go into my Tyranitar. I'm going to Crunch here because I did the Calc. And Crunch had generally pretty good odds of 2 hit KO and Clef from this range. Assuming he is whatever the standard dex EV spread is, Crunch always did 2 hit KO if I got this 33. And that's a max roll, so was really happy to get that. With Clef out of the way as well, I've got a lot better of a time with my Zapdos, because now he really doesn't have switch-ins. <laughs> and I'm going to cane the drag pull. As you can see, 78, that's an insane amount of damage. And so now this can't really switch into my Zapdos too well. I'm going to choose now as my chance to sack the Melmetal and get T-Tar in. And again, I calc this too because I wanted to see if Fire Punch could pick off the Dragapult. I didn't think he'd go Venomicon, and if he does, I'm a CB T-Tar. I probably 2 it KO even with um Stamina just because, you know, he's Heavy Duty Boots instead of a Leftovers sort of item. So I felt good about Fire Punch, just knowing that it would pick this mod off. Make sure that if he goes Ferrothorn as well, that we just get rid of that Nin in there. And he's going to go out to his book. I am going to go into Mr. Camel himself, Saharaja. And I'm just going to finish the game off. I'm going to Sword Stance up. This Pokemon, he has to get lucky at this point for Venomicon to beat down my Saharaja. And Diamond Storm always Okos this with like a single turn of sand. That crit did not matter. That crit just killed like a second book. <laughs> and we're actually going to see Dragapult do a surprisingly low amount of damage here. Um, I'm not bulk invested at all, but that's just kind of the Campbell's natural bulk coming in clutch there. So I hope y'all did enjoy this. I don't know if I'll upload every game that I play this tournament. If I think the game was good or fun, or if there's stuff I want to talk about in it, then I will. <laughs> but I like this game just because you know what? I broke my cold streak. It's coming off the heels of me winning the um, Saharaja inaugural game versus another one of my friends. So hey, maybe we're on the maybe we're on the up and up now. But I hope y'all enjoyed this. Of course, if you did, leave a like, subscribe if you aren't already subbed, and I'll see you next time. Peace.